Boom, first spring classics, Vanderpoel wins. Sorry for being away for so long. Turns out uni could actually be hard in his final year. Vanderpoel, big win today. Uh, he battered everyone in the final couple kilometers. He looked very strong. He didn't go with too many moves and then just bin Benut in the sprint, which is not too surprising. So we're just going to go through some numbers, talk about what I felt Vanderpoel was doing and all the rest of it. Uh, so yeah, first of all, we'll just go through, you know, normalized 373, nothing too bonkers for the big boy. Um, we've seen some stupid numbers from him. Uh, but yeah, pretty impressive nonetheless. 44k an hour, um, 1600 meters of climbing. You know, it's it's a hilly race, but it is, it's not crazy hilly. Um, it's it's sort of only really the big, uh, the middle part that is quite burgy. On the left, you can see some power numbers. Um, peak normalized is always interesting to see. He had like three hours at 400 watts which is actually crazy. Um, so it's always good just to see the heart rate. You can sort of see how easy it was. And you can see at some points here, first sort of hour and 16 was like 116 heart rate. So real easy, 270 normalized is not too rough for these boys. First climb of the day was the uh, new Quermont. So the Yoda Quermont is the one basically uh, right next to it, which is the cobbled climb that you're probably all used to. Again, six watts per kilo for two minutes, 40, nothing crazy. I think the only thing to note with Vanderpoel, sometimes his power seems crazy, but he is quite big. Like, because 446 sounds quite hard, but then if you think six watts per kilo for two and a bit minutes, that's that's pretty chill. Um, this bit started to ramp up a bit again, um, like 430 again for four minutes. Um, but the moves really started to come later. And in between the climbs, it's still relatively hard. They sort of generally descend on motorways, so sometimes it's not too bad. Like this one here is a, quite easy as well, 390 watts. Uh, but it started to really pick up the pace here early on. There were quite a lot of attacks from some of the second favorites, like Nick van der, van der Leijk, I think, was going on the attack for Jumbo Visma. Um, but then he was caught later on, so you can see up. It's not too steep, this climb, but 530 watts is definitely going to make the legs sting a little bit. Uh, then we got another climb, which is a quarter kier, um, which was the final climb. Again, you can see it was pretty some violent accelerations up to 1100 watts. But the moves really started to go... Um, up the Berg 10 hoot, uh, which was when um, the big boy Ben Turner decided to get on the front and absolutely launch it. You can see here 570 watts for two minutes is starting to get a bit more tasty. Um, again, 590 watts here, which is really where the, the move started to go. Uh, and then they finally sort of went on the Canary Berg. Again, you can see 500 watts um, up here for two minutes 40. And then one of the hardest ones was actually the Canotta Berg. So you can see in between it's still like 400 watts ish. I think this is when. Um, What's his face? Uh, Van der Poel was trying. Oh, uh, sorry, Pagat was trying to get across, and then you can see another five hundred watts up this climb. So pretty, pretty tough. But if we look at sort of the peak two minutes again, that came on uh, the Bergden Halt, which was uh, when uh, Turner was attacking. Um, but what's interesting to see is that his actual like ten minute power. It all came at the end of the race. So if you watch the race, you'll know they sort of took it. Um, hard, but not crazy hard. Campanuts attacked on the downhill. Um, so you can see they went up the, uh, um, what's it called? The Nuka, Ber Nuka Raburga, um, which is up here. And then on the downhill, Campanuts put in a big attack. And then you'll see they did a loop around no Nuka. I don't really know how to pronounce it. So if anyone does know, that's probably... Um, but you'll see again, Campanuts put in a big attack down here. It is 58 tooth on. So you can see they go around again. Um, I think it was just on this downhill here. Um, where it really started to kick off and this is when Pickup was really trying to get across and couldn't get across and this is really where the, the bigger moves started to go so if we look at the last like 10 minutes it was 440 watts 470 normalized apparently only a cat one to be fair so a cat one could get round um which is obviously absolute chat um it was unbelievable numbers but you can see also like some of the moves that when he tried to get across so you can see like this was one of the earlier moves um when Campanuts and uh, Benut while up the road. Um, he did 700 watts for 48 seconds to get across. Um, and then it was really like, to be honest, the last like sort of 3k, um, was, was when the move started to go. Pickock put a big attack in with about 2k to go. Um, but you can see here, actually, there wasn't a huge attack to get across, um, to teach Benut. And then once they were on, they were just sort of doing some work um, with each other like this bit here was actually more when Pidcock was trying to get across you remember he attacked into the technical section um, So actually the move across I think it was more like everyone was so tired that it didn't require a huge acceleration really to get out um, And then after this you can see like it was 500 watts for a minute and a half um, And sort of like still 400 watts like pulling turns and stuff But you can also see that like Benut probably wasn't doing too much work which makes sense And then the final sprint was a thousand watts for 16 seconds um, but a little bit 
more impressive with 1100 watts for 13. Nothing crazy, to be honest, this final sprint. Like, it wasn't bonkers Vanderpoel numbers, but I guess he just had enough to beat uh, Tish Benu, so it didn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, that's my sort of analysis. Vanderpoel looks good. Will he win Flanders? I'm not sure. Um, wow, it looks really, really strong. Uh, I also don't know about Tade. Um, it's a bit harder, so I think that will suit him more, and he would have learned more about the... Uh, like how to race, I guess, because he hasn't raced since under 23 Flanders. Um, so definitely he will, on, in Belgium, sorry. So he'll definitely um, be a bit sharper and all the rest of it. But again, you can see like this bit here was really why the move started to go. Because um, he almost made the front group. He wasn't too far off. So I think he'll be a factor, maybe Pidcock as well. Uh, and then, you know, we'll just see who else is there. And then I guess maybe Alaphilippe, rumours he's doing it. I don't think he is. And Askreen as well will also be a favourite. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, I can't promise too many more uh, in the next couple of weeks, but we'll just try and bash them out when I can. So anyway, cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next one.